Hello guys, welcome back to Tux Writers. In previous videos, we developed two codes, two separate scripts in Freeform and Phoenix to simulate the transient heat simulation inside a helical shape, this shape. And in this video, I want to compare those two scripts and show you the differences, the minor differences between Phoenix and Freeform and their similarity. Let's go for it. Okay, so in uh, uh, for, for the comparison, I use the code, the codes that we developed, exactly as the same as they are. Let's say because yeah, they are they are a little bit different, and and you know, in, in, from the perspective of values, I don't want to change them um, to be exactly the same because yeah we have already discussed them the, the concepts behind them and the, yeah so this is the the phoenix code and this is the the freefem code please refer to previous videos um the corresponding videos if you don't know or if you are interested to know how they work and this is the vig form of the equation for the transient heat transfer equation and uh, yeah, so this is uh, uh, the code. They are very similar. And as I said, the, I'm intended to show you the similarity that it doesn't really matter which tool you use. What is really important in this regard for finite element computation in this level, in a level that you want to have full control and things, or let's say more control than, for example, the programs that they have GUI, graphical user interface interfaces uh, what really matter is uh, uh, the, the the concepts there the VIC formulation or the concepts of finite element and that's very important and as I said in previous videos we will discuss these things in details in the future in a dedicated series on the theory of finite element but uh, yeah the the, uh, the the goal and the aim of the video is something else and, and yeah these are the process to de de to derive the weak formulation we already discussed this in two in, in the previous videos in both the freefem and the phoenix video and this is the final form of uh, the weak formulation the final uh, uh, let's say a formula that we need to implement in into in in you know in the code and uh, yeah, uh, these are the scripts, but before comparing the scripts, let me show you also the results. These are the results of the Phoenix program, but if you run a free, the, the FreeFem code, it produces similar results to this. So this is the geometry. Let me, let me open a terminal. So I go to desktop and then uh, with Paraview, uh, I open the file inside the output uh, PVD output directory named output.pvd. So yeah, this is the file. This is the output. So this is the mesh. We used Salumi to generate the mesh. And uh, then we use also a couple of converters and also Gmesh to have some manipulation. So yeah, they are all available. All these steps are available in the previous videos. And uh, yeah, uh, this is the output. Uh, as I said, this is the output of the Phoenix program, but uh, FreeFem produces similar results. Although in FreeFem code, we had a higher diffusion rate, so it was uh, actually moving uh, uh, faster. Uh, but yeah, so an inlet here, an input, a boundary condition here, directly boundary condition here, and a directly boundary condition here. I want to see how to do that. Uh, actually, we saw how to do that in Phoenix and FreeFem, but here is the comparison only. So uh, FreeFem scripts are very similar to C++, as we discussed, and Phoenix, uh, Phoenix script is implemented in Python. So uh, here we import everything from uh, Phoenix namespace. Here we need to load a couple of packages. So for various functionalities, you load different plugins, let's say. Then for definition, this, this is just a syntax of Python. Here we have the syntax of C++, but instead of float, we have real as we discussed, and we have func here because the, the diffusion coefficient can be variable, but here it is a constant. 
And then for reading the mesh here, you see that we have mesh tree because it is in 3D. So in FreeFam, the first difference in FreeFam, you should def define the dimension. If it is in like 3D, in three dimensions or two dimension, it differs. And that's why we have loaded the mesh tree plugin to deal with 3D mesh files. So here we have mesh tree definition of mesh equals to red mesh. And here it's very similar. So instead of mesh, which is uh, one of the formats that FreeFM is very comfortable to handle, here we have XML for Phoenix. We load the mesh and uh, Phoenix needs one extra step. This is another difference for handling labels if they come from an external mesh, which is the case in this one. And it, this is, you know, in the real world research, you usually deal with geometries that are complex that cannot be created using the functionality that uh, the, th these programs provide like Phoenix has its own functionality for mesh generation and FreeFem has generally I find the one in FreeFem more flexible more advanced than the one that the one is available in Phoenix but generally this is what you need that you import the geometry from an external program but FreeFem doesn't need it so directly FreeFem can read the labels and then we define the function space. Here is the P1 function space as defined as we here. We define it as a space P1 and P1 as the, the order of element. In this case, it's as a first order function, el, fi, finite element space. And then we define the variables on it. Here we define the variables using this trial and test function. Uh, definition here, it doesn't really matter which one is test and which one is trial. So we just define them. So this is another difference. And then U old is uh, again, similar definition as a space P1, but here you need to define it as a function. And U old is actually, as you may remember, is the solution in the previous time step. And then, uh, yeah, some uh, here, uh, the boundary conditions are defined out outside of the weak formulation. So two Dricklet boundary condition constant on different labels in freefam you will see that they are defined inside the weak formulation so we go on uh, and here is uh, where we define the weak formulation as i said in the freefam video uh, there are a couple of ways to define weak formulation in freefam mm, it's not a case for phoenix in phoenix they are always uh, defined in the same way but this is kind this is with problem statements it can be also var f and for var f there are different uh, um, ways that you can define it and there is also one solve namespace solve statements solve keyword sorry here that uh, it solves the weak formulation when it uh, when the program flow reaches that uh, that point here we need to define we need to call this termic later to solve this weak formulation. So this is the way that this is implemented in Phoenix, uh, which is imp we implemented it similar to this weak formulation. And for FreeFam, it's a little bit different because we, instead of having uh, any, every term multiplied by delta t, the time step, we have this here, this term and this term divided by delta t and the diffusion term doesn't have delta t. So this is really the difference in the mathematics and not the definition in uh, FreeFam or Phoenix. So as you can see, the terms are very similar, uh, but in FreeFam, you need to define that it is the in, it is an integration uh, you know, term because here we have integration. So I found this a little bit more comfortable and sometimes easier to manipulate than the Phoenix definition and also more explicit, let's say. So this is the integration term because sometimes it can be also in, in a lower order of uh, differentiation, sorry, integration, like for the uh, two, 2D integration or the order of uh, in, in 1D for the lines and surfaces. And then as you can see here, we have also this term for the for the left hand side, for the right hand side, that is, uh, that has, uh, I, I brought it to, to the um, right hand side and that's why these are negative. Uh, but as I said, in different, uh, uh, in, in, in other ways of defining weak formulation inside FreeFM, it can be different. And here comes the main difference that is actually the definition of boundary conditions in FreeFM. And as I said in the FreeFM video, there are different ways of using uh, boundary conditions in FreeFM. So it's sometimes they can be really explicit. And as a result, you have more control on that. So in this case, I also prefer the way the FreeFM deals with boundary conditions. But in this notation, it is very similar.
similar to the notation of Phoenix, and it uses penalization technique to to uh, to define the binary, to expose the binary conditions. And yeah, this is the diffusion term, very similar. So here we have used the dot and grad, but it's also possible in FreeFM to define this as macros. And you will see this a lot in FreeFM examples that they are not written as this. Here I wrote it to have to have it more explicit for demonstration purposes. And then Phoenix needs A and L as a right hand side and left hand side of the equation using these operations, using these function calls. And then for Phoenix, as I said, we need to define U again as a function of V. This is not necessary in FreeFam. What is here, and you know, actually, we didn't consider that in the Phoenix code, is the initial condition. All the initial condition is zero. But, uh, you know, it can also be, um, it could have been reflected in the Phoenix code. Here it is implicitly considered to be zero because we didn't have any initial condition for that. But generally, uh, Phoenix has also some, you know, very normal uh, definition using this assign uh, function or uh, project is for the projection uh, for defining the initial condition. So it's not a big deal as you, this is not a difference between free and Phoenix. And then the time loop in a C++ format and here the time loop on the uh, uh, Python format and everything is the same. You can see the u old equals u. This is for assignment and the assignment is like this in, in, free, in Phoenix. So similar and thermic it calls this uh, the Vic formulation. So it solves um, uh, the Vic formulation to define to sorry to obtain u. And here we, we solve a equals l to obtain u again with the boundary conditions with the provided boundary conditions. So very similar here. Um, yeah, uh, in Phoenix, you will have control on, for example, for HPC aspects, like for parallelization aspects uh, of the solution here. You can directly define them here, especially in Phoenix X as I mentioned in a previous video. And in FreeFM, you will have control also on that, not in this format, not in this uh, definition, but using varf, you can have full control on a way that uh, it gets uh, solved. But you can also define a couple of some parameters, some basic parameters as uh, more arguments to this uh, inside this parenthesis. So they're more or less the same. And here, yeah, I have, as I said, I have more, uh, I have an additional statement to, to save the results each three steps only to save uh, resources in this case, um, disk space. And then I increase the cont and uh, because here I use cont to save uh, the VTU file. So um, uh, in, in, free, in Phoenix, it is automatically handled. In FreeFM, we need to explicitly define the name of the files to have a counter to increase it. But this is only for the sequential uh, freefem. In the parallel freefem, when you load, for example, the Petsy extension, there are some plugins, some codes written in plugins that automatically, automatically takes care of this. And the syntax will be similar to this one. So you don't need to specify the name of the file here. We directly define VTU files for, for the VTK. And here it's just a PVD as a container that uh, has the definition for all the saved VTU files. So for saving the files, there is no difference. And my experience is that generally you have, again, more control on saving saving things on um, on FreeFam and Phoenix, Phoenix has some limitations. Sometimes it becomes a little bit tricky uh, to save multiple, let's say, st state functions, in this, I mean, solution uh, variables, and also to save like uh, multi-dimension, I mean, things with different dimensions in a file. In FreeFam, it is more, let's say, flexible. So as a conclusion, yeah, I, I have worked more with FreeFem, but also with Phoenix, you, you know, um, yeah. So my experience says that, yeah, if you want to solve something very fast, like, uh, like for prototyping purposes, Phoenix is very ideal. But over time, if you want more control and different specs, FreeFem can be very good because, yeah, you, you will see, we, as I said, we will have more dedicated, uh, let's say, series on FreeFam and Phoenix, and I will discuss more specs of them, just side by side. 
Uh, but generally, yeah, FreeFam uh, gives you uh, more control on uh, various aspects, especially when it comes to like uh, parallel computing. Uh, FreeFam can be, um, yeah, at the lower lower level, so giving you more low level access and control over the code. In Phoenix, most of the things are wrapped, uh, especially for the Python wrapper, wrapped on functions. So giving access, having access to, to lower levels can be sometimes tricky. But in the C++ uh, interface of Phoenix, which is Dolphin interface, it's uh, a little bit different than uh, what you have in the uh, Python interface. And yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to say about the differences between Phoenix and FreeFam. I hope you find this uh, useful. What you can do is just grabbing these codes and trying to reproduce what I had uh, in previous videos. And then you can see the differences in action. But generally, as you saw, the main and uh, the crucial part of using these tools are the 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 concepts of the weak formulation and variational formulation to drive uh, the equation to to the weak formulation of the uh, partial differential uh, equation that you want to solve and yeah uh, so um, i hope you find this uh, information useful and uh, yeah see you in next videos